Hi everyone, I'm Nick Olivo, and today we're going to see a couple of mods that will make working with dynamic lighting a whole lot easier. For starters, we'll see how to determine how much light a token is currently being exposed to, and we'll see how to invoke a report that allows you to view and edit a token's vision settings, how much light a token is emitting, as well as modify the light settings for the current page that you're on, and troubleshoot when a particular lighting effect isn't working the way that you're expecting. Note that because we're using mods, a pro account will be required in order to do this. Before we dive in, I'd just like to thank Roll20 for sponsoring this video. So to install these mods, what you want to do is come out to the mod library, and in the drop-down here, you want to search for Dynamic Lighting Tool. And this mod comes to us from the illustrious Keith Curtis. We're going to be talking more about this mod in a few minutes. But the great thing about this mod is it also installs the other mod I want to show you today as one of its prerequisites. So add this to your game. You're going to get a prompt saying to install token mod, check light level, path math, matrix math, and vector math in order to continue. Say OK to that. And that's going to add all of the other prerequisites that you need into your game. And the other mod that we're going to focus on today is called Check Light Level. This comes to us from a user named Oosh. And this is actually the first mod that we're going to talk about today. So let's dive in and show you how that works. So here I am in my game. I've got my Twilight Cleric slash Fighter on the board. And if I jump to the dynamic lighting layer here in the game, we'll see that I've got a couple one-way dynamic lighting barriers set up, but I don't have any light sources right now. So if we jump back into the token layer and we select our character Jayla's token and we run this command, check light level, it will tell us how much light Jayla is currently exposed to. So let's do that. We're going to pop that into the chat here. Check light level, and it says that Jayla is currently in darkness. Okay, cool. So now let's change that. Let's jump back to the dynamic lighting layer, and we're going to put in a torch. So I'm just going to come down here. I'm going to place a light. I'm going to put the light right here. Now, a torch... By default, if we have a look at its settings, is going to give us bright light out to a distance of 20 feet and low light out to a distance of another 20 feet. So right now, Jayla should be listed as being within the bright light radius. So let's jump back to the objects and tokens layer again. We'll select Jayla again and we will rerun check light level. And now we see that Jayla is in direct bright light. And the nice thing is you can actually see the difference in lighting reflected on the token itself. So up here, she's in darkness. Down here, she's in direct bright light. Okay, so now let's go back to the dynamic lighting layer again. And we're going to move the light source out a little bit. So now Jayla will no longer be in bright light. She's far enough away. She's going to be in dim light. So let's see how that looks. Back to the objects and tokens layer again. We're going to run the command again. There we go. And now we see that Jayla is in one source of dim light. And she's in 49% total light level. So this is really handy for when you're in a situation where the lighting matters. Jayla here is a Twilight Cleric. Some of her powers are dependent upon being in dim light or darkness. And now there's no ambiguity around what kind of light she's currently in. So that's checking to see how much light an individual token is being exposed to. But now let's see how we can pull up that menu that will allow us to view and troubleshoot all manner of dynamic lighting items in our game. And that's where the dynamic lighting tool mod that I showed you at the very beginning from Keith Curtis comes into play. The command we want to run is called DL tool. So if I just paste that right into the chat here, we can see that we get this menu telling us all of the dynamic lighting information for the specific page. So my page here is called test. Dynamic lighting is turned on. The GM layer opacity is currently set to 35%. Daylight mode is off. Barriers restrict movement is turned on. The update on drop setting is enabled. And explorer mode is enabled. Okay, so all that information is right here. I don't need to go into the page menu to see that. If I have a token selected and I run the command, then in addition to seeing the page settings, we're also going to see information about the token that's currently highlighted. So this is Jayla. 
Jayla can be controlled by all players. And you'll notice that as I hover over these items, we get tooltips explaining what they mean. She has vision currently turned on. Her night vision is on and set to 90 feet. She's in 49% total light. This is actually coming from check light level. So the dynamic lighting tool has check light level as one of its prerequisites. That's why it was installed automatically when we installed dynamic lighting tool. So it's using that information from check light level to display that right here. We can also see how much light Jayla is emitting. And right now she's not emitting any. So her token is not putting out any light at all. And then again, here's the dynamic lighting information for the page itself. And the great thing is we can make changes to all these dynamic lighting settings right from these menus. So in the middle of a fight, if Jayla's casts daylight, I don't need to open up the token settings and mess around with that. I can just click this preset right here that says daylight. And now Jayla is emitting bright light out for 60 feet, dim light for another 60 feet. And that happened with the touch of a button. And when the spell expires or if it gets dispelled or whatever, I can just click daylight off. And now she's no longer radiating that light. And as you can see, there are a bunch of other presets here as well. So if your character lights up a candle or a torch or a hooded lantern or the light spell, all of those are included. And it's just a matter of clicking the appropriate one to light up the appropriate source. So now let's see how this tool can help us do some troubleshooting. So I'm going to open up Jayla's token here and I'm going to turn off her night vision and her regular vision and click save. Okay, and now I'm going to run the DL tool command again. And now we can see that Jayla's vision is off and her night vision is off. But if I click on this, why can't this token C button? It gives me a checklist of all the things that are going on with this token. So right here in red, Jayla's token has its vision turned off and its night vision is turned off. So you've got this list of all these steps you can follow to correct whatever problem that you're having. So now to fix this, I can just click on vision right here. It gives me Jayla's stats and I can say, oh, okay, turn on her vision, turn on her night vision, and then set the appropriate distance for her, her dark vision. Maybe it's only 60 feet. Maybe she should be out to 120 feet, whatever it is. I just make those tweaks and the changes are applied automatically to her token. One last thing I'd like to mention is that if you just want to see one particular segment of the dynamic lighting tools output, you can do that with these commands here. So if we only wanted to see the vision information about Jayla's token, we can run this command, DL tool dash dash report pipe vision, and that will give us just the vision information for her token rather than also giving us information about how much light she's emitting and information about the page. So what you can do is take these commands, put them into macros, and then you'll always have them handy for when you want to set up or modify the vision and light settings in your game. So there you have it, a couple of mods to make working with dynamic lighting easier. I'd like to say thanks again to Oosh and Keith Curtis for writing these mods. They're really helpful and absolutely fantastic. And I want to say thank you for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a like and consider subscribing. And until next time, folks, have a great day.